the holding company game is absolutely beautiful once you know how to play right now i'm working on the corporate citizen playbook this is going to be very different than any other thing that i've done and right now we're on how to set up a holding company and how to integrate that because I have had a holding company for a few years, filed taxes, and I've learned so much. But here's the thing where the holding company thing is really beautiful. Today, I am working on transitioning my holding company structure. Now, I have companies that are active, that are making money, and it's really, really easy once you know how this game works. What I want you to do is to sit back and to think, what would your life look like if you were living exactly how you wanted to live? I want you to think, if you were living in the house that you wanted to live in, you were driving the car that you wanted to live in, you were married or in a relationship with the person that you wanted to be in, in a relationship with. I'm here to tell you that's all powerful. That's all possible. The power of persistence, a bold guide to achieving your goals, will help you get there. But that's not all I have for you. What I want you to do is to go ahead and get yourself involved in the Corporate Citizen Playbook training. I have a goal to create 50,000 corporate citizens. What is a corporate citizen? A person who has an income of $250,000. That in the United States of America makes you rich. That's the beginning, and this is what this whole curriculum is designed to help you get there. First of all, teach you everything that you need to know about setting up a corporate rations, setting up the structure, the LLC, the holding companies, the operating companies, teach you how to get six-figure business lines of credit, teach you how to set up a company, teach you how to set up an operating company, teach you all of these things that you currently don't know. So here is where this even gets better. First of all, right now I am building out the Corporate Citizen Playbook training. That's gonna take me some time because it's gonna be a pretty large course. During that phase when I'm building that out, you can get in at an extreme discount. And whether you go ahead and do the one and done or do the payment plan, you lock yourself in to get all of the training that is coming. Next month, we're gonna be talking about how to make money, how to make a lot of money with a small YouTube channel. That's gonna be probably July. And if you go ahead and lock in today, where you would go below, watch the video, you would get into the description, or it will be in the comments section, where you can go ahead and do a one and done, or do the payment plan, and use the promo code JUMP, J-U-M-P, to get this extreme discount that's gonna lock you in to all of the training that's about to go down in 2023. So once again, go below the video, it'll be in the description, or it'll be in the comment section where you can go ahead and get in on this new training. Because one of the things that I am consistently seeing a lot of people want to get highly involved in the esoterics of starting a holding company. And it's not, the holding company is important. Let's get that 100% clear. Holding company structure, whether you have an S corporation or not, how you have things set up is really, really important when you make money and when you file taxes very very important how this has gone up so i've been in this holding company situation and because of the car rental business i am taking huge huge losses now this year i haven't filed my taxes for this year because i'm taking a loss i'm probably going to file them next month and i never want to do that again <laughs> i mean that Let's go ahead and talk about it. when you start a business and you have it up and running. 
there's so many things that you can do that are wrong from a LLC legitimacy standpoint that really will not impact you until you a go to the bank to get a loan or B file your taxes. And typically this is when all of the mistakes and mishaps <clears throat> and misgivings start to appear. But like today, and this is going to be in the training, I am revamping my holding company structure because I have learned from practical experience. This is not a test. This is not a play thing. This is something I'm actually doing for real. I do this in real life, right? So one of the things that has become very, very important to me is this new training is going like the old training was great. The old training was great. This new training is going to be superb because it's going to teach you how to set up a holding company. And one of the things I went back and forth on, because I had a lot of questions about this, it was like, how do I take an existing company and turn that into a holding company? And there's ways you can do it, but most people are gonna make a mistake because they're gonna do things out of sequence. They're gonna do things in a manner that doesn't make sense. So with the training, I'm gonna teach you how to set up your first holding company and how to set up your first operating company. Hear me and hear me well. Once you learn how to do that, setting up additional and new companies is snap your fingers easy. It is so easy because um, I have to move I think six or seven companies to the new holding company. And that's just gonna be an administrative update uh, from the Secretary of State of Georgia to put these new companies in the holding company. Uh, one of the reasons I have not paid myself this year is this will be, well, 2022 will be the last year that I will file taxes for my old holding company. In my old holding company, I'm not gonna dissolve it. Let's talk about that. I got $750,000 worth of business credit. Maybe 850,000, I have to look. Attached to the old holding company. So that old holding company has to stay alive for me to use that business credit. And then what I gotta do is make money and then file my taxes, then apply for business credit for the new company. And this transition is gonna take me about two to three years. Cause uh, there, there's this meme that's going around. Would you want an 850 credit score? Or would you take $4,000 per week for life? Or would you take $2 million cash? I can tell you, number one, I don't have an 850 credit score. My credit score is between 790 and 815. That's the highest it's ever been. So I don't have an 850 credit score. But here's some information for you. If you have a 750 credit score, you're going to get the same interest rate as someone with an 850. So the goal should be 750. So I'm well above 750. And I have a business with tax returns. And I have seen people say things like, I saw this one foolish piece of advice. You can go out with an 850 credit score and you can get $2 million in business credit in one day. I got a company that's made millions of dollars. I got a 790 credit score at the lowest. And I've gotten turned down for business credit cards. I got turned down from Bank of America because I had too many inquiries. So this whole myth that if you just got an 850 credit score and you're going to be able to get all this credit, it's a myth. Because here's what I have seen with American Express, my favorite credit card provider is American Express, when you apply for business credit, they look at your business checking account. 
And depending on how well your business checking account looks, that's what they're gonna base your credit limit off. This is how I'm walking around with, let me see. Let me pull this out. This is how I'm walking around with a $75,000 limit on this credit card. And this is why I'm walking around with another, it just will not, ah, there it is. Another $75,000 limit on that credit card. Because American Express will base your credit limit on your active income activity. And if you are a business owner, and you want to apply for American Express, and this, this is gonna be a whole section in the training because I figured some stuff out that I don't see on YouTube, and this is gonna be in the training, how to manipulate and how to use American Express because at the moment, American Express is my daily driver. This is, let me explain to you the benefits and why I got this card. All right, this card right here. This card, if you spend 150, you spend five thousand dollars, they give you 1.5 their points, right? And this this card has, uh, I've already maxed this card out for this year, which is fifty thousand dollars, okay? And this card, to max it out, it's 120 thousand. And this is just these cards are getting me Delta flights. That's what I'm getting from this card setup. This is my daily driver. I've switched all my spin to this card and everything's going to happen. Like this, this gets real interesting because I'm doing this in real life and it's beautiful because I've seen videos that are talking about American Express is cutting credit card limits. American Express recently gave me an offer to give me even more credit. So, I'm gonna teach you how to use American Express. Once again, American Express, last July, I re-entered the American Express credit card portal. And of my $850,000 in business credit, American Express represents 350,000. I haven't even been in the American Express, back with the American Express family since a year. So this tells me that two to three years in the future, I'm going to be sitting on a million dollars of business credit with American Express. That just tells me because number one, you gotta have the spend. That That's critical. You cannot just go out and get American Express cards and have no spend. And this is currently what's in my wallet. These are my daily drivers, right? These are the cards I use for everything. And these cards have really specific use case scenarios. Not using this card at the moment. Use this card virtually every day for food. So there's a strategy for my credit use and how I use credit and the benefits I get, which will be in the training, because the, you know, I, I can go ahead and tell you because I have a holding company situation that I am going to, I've already planned out what I'm going to do with my uh, business credit until 2027. I've already got that mapped out because I did a lot of personal credit applications. I did a lot of business credit applications. So I'm at a moment where my credit report is cooling off because inquiries do matter. I know with Bank of America, I know this for a fact. And I'm at a point where I have not applied for anything. I did get a Capital One card. I got that July. And Capital One is very interesting because the Capital One credit card is reporting on my personal credit report. 
because there's some myth that some credit cards for Capital One don't report, but this one in fact does report to all three of my credit card reports, which means it, I'm not using that a lot, or if I use it, I will pay it off before the balance reflects on my credit report. But once again, once you understand the beauty of the holding company structure, because I, I get this question a lot, like what other kind of business are you gonna start? And there are some other businesses that I have earmarked that I'm going to start, and I'm gonna discuss this with my students. Now, why do you say that? It's Glendon, you, you're typical, you share a lot of stuff, which I do, but here's the things. When it gets on YouTube, and a lot of people get into it, the business model gets crowded and saturated, and it you just don't get the use case scenario out of it that you typically could get if there wasn't this huge, huge emphasis on doing this business. Toro's flooded, Airbnb's flooded, Etsy's flooded, because there's a ton of people on YouTube talking about these business models and they get flooded. So my students will know about the things because there's some business models I'm getting ready to get into and I have to do it step by step. You know, there, there's, there's no rush to do this because uh, there will be new training in the holding company situation and there's gonna be things that I have to do and I'm gonna have to kind of circle back because I got to do ahead and set up my new holding company and there's some other things I'm gonna do. There's some other things I'm gonna discuss with my students that I'm gonna do that you can potentially do if you have the will and the might to do these things. Because one of the things that I'm getting ready to really do is make some serious moves because when I set up my holding company in the beginning, it was for real estate. And that's what I was doing. And that, that, that right there, I, I, that right there, that, that was crazy. So what you got to understand is once you understand the beauty of the holding company situation, the beauty, because when I start these new companies, it's going to be so easy for me to set up these holding these these new companies because i've already got the hard part and i'm going to tell you the hardest part is going to be getting your first operating company up running making money and that that's going to be the hardest thing and this is something that we're going to address once we get past the setup the holding companies the llc's I've got some information in there about trust and C corps. And there's other things that we will get into because once you get into this, it's just simply beautiful how this sets you up to go out and to get into other business models and not have to disturb anything. I'm already, Put it this way i'm already like once again uh, i'm already programmed for new business models just like that and let's talk about the mindset the average person in america makes less than forty thousand dollars single person income uh i was just kind of looking at the money that i have made this month since i started selling stuff again and I don't have my phone on me, but my, my girlfriend, she works. I will make more money in one day than my girlfriend who will make all month long. All month long. And I'm very grateful. I'm very appreciative. I'm, I just love the fact that I'm in that situation, but once this thing starts really getting cooking, because we just started selling the 1st of May, the day is the 22nd, uh, been in the gym, this is my gym watch, uh, we will go ahead, it's going to get to the point, by December or before, I will make more money in one hour 
then my girlfriend makes actually that happened this month where I made more money in one day than my girlfriend makes all month working. She has two jobs. She's got two jobs. I don't mess with lazy chicks. I mess with aggressive go-getter chicks. Um, one of the things that's going to happen is at some point this year, which I keep saying December, I think it's going to happen before December, but I'm going to make two to three times what she makes in a month in one hour. And see, that's the mindset because one of the things that I don't look at, I don't look at Toro. I don't look at Airbnb. And this is very interesting. I've seen a lot of people because these are heavy. These are internet heavy businesses. There's a ton of information out there on the internet about these businesses that is crazy at the moment. That is really, really crazy at the moment. So you have a ton of stuff like with real estate. There's a lot of guys who are selling real estate. There's a lot of people selling Airbnb courses. It's, it's interestingly enough, there's a lot of people out there selling um, credit courses. But if you get into an internet heavy business, because the internet is pushing these businesses, pushing these businesses, everyone's knowing that it's like, um, this whole notion that most millionaires got their money from real estate, which is absolutely false. You can go over here to the Forbes list and look at where they're getting their money. They're getting their money from business. They're getting their money from business, right? But one of the things that I'm getting ready to do, because uh, I'm being very strategic. I'm not trying to rush this um, because once we get to the holding company, the bills out, so the holding companies, the LLC, all these guidelines, because uh, I think I'm going to do corporate banking today. I don't really know. I got to look at my notes, but we're going to get into it because there, it's a busy day. I got a lot of things to do, a lot of things to set up, a lot of things to position as we get into this internet marketing business thing. Because once you get this mindset, you will literally be sitting around once you get your first and that, that's key. That's really, really key because once you get your first business up, rolling, cash flowing, making you money, that opens the door to you open other businesses. Cause at the moment I have my online course business. I have my YouTube business and I need to sit down and really think about my consulting business because, uh, if you know, I've figured out a purpose for my third YouTube channel, which incidentally is working pretty well. And for consulting, I have to sit down, I have to think because there's people who put comments in there that they want to talk to me, but that's not how consulting should go. What I'm going to start doing is YouTube business consulting. Now, what is YouTube business consulting? YouTube business consulting is uh, which is going to be the next course after the corporate citizen playbook, how to start a small YouTube channel. And once I say, once again, you can start a YouTube channel that has less than 10,000 subscribers. And if you know what to do, you can make 15, 20, $30,000 a month from that YouTube channel. Because here's one of the things that I'm seeing. And this is one of the reasons I've been really, really careful about what I say about YouTube. YouTube and the popular niches is being saturated. Everybody is coming out. Like I've seen so many brand new uh, YouTube channels and honestly, the content creators are putting out really good, really good content. But what, what, what did I say about Airbnb right now? There are a number of people on YouTube who are advertising how to build business credit. If you go ahead and enroll in the money mindset program, which teaches you how to manage your money for free, you will learn how to build business credit for free. Do you understand that you can go out, set up a new LLC, 
get an EIN, so a business checking account, and go to a number of credit card issuers and banks and build yourself a hundred to $150,000 worth of business credit within 90 days. I got it all in this course. I teach you how to do it step by step. So go ahead and get the money mindset program today. The links is going to be in the video description and they will often be in the comments. So either way you can find it. And once again, this course is 100% free. It's fast, it's easy, it's quick to the point, and it's things that you need to do to go ahead and learn how to manage your money. I feel that money management is a critical component to success. And this is why I am giving you this course. There's no charge, I'm not charging you today. I'm not gonna charge you tomorrow, there will be no fee. You can go ahead, enroll in this money management course and start learning the tools that you need to be financially literate to get your personal credit, get your credit, cre your credit card credit and all this other stuff straight where you can be a financially sufficient and on point person. Go ahead and enroll today. Once again, the enrollment is free. It's going to be in the video description or it'll be in one of the comments. So my name is Glendon Cameron and I will see you guys in the next one. Toro and these other template businesses that are YouTube heavy. They're getting crowded, they're getting saturated. Same thing. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about was doing a money channel. And I don't know if I'm gonna do that. You know, personal finance. I don't know, because I gotta think about it. Because this, this is one of the things I have learned with my process that's in the holding company training is when I sit down, I think about stuff, I do my research, I plan it out appropriately, it just goes way much better than me just, boom, just doing something. So I gotta sit down and think about how to set up my YouTube consulting business. Because you know I've got YouTube, I've got the online course business, I'm gonna have the YouTube consulting business, I'm gonna set that up, and it's gonna be very much a corporate type situation because you know if you want to do a youtube channel that's where that illustrates hey how i afford my hellcat uh, i can't help you with my youtube training my youtube training is going to be for a more adult type thing more training more things cooking stuff like that so that's something else i got to work on and i'm going to start and if you notice that under the YouTube videos, the, the content has just been me recommending that you go out and get American Express credit cards. That's been the content for the longest. Now there's actual training and sales stuff under there. <clears throat> and once we get to um, how to make a lot of money with a small YouTube channel, <clears throat> we will get into those details of the things that you need to do to position yourself to win in this current YouTube environment. Because honestly, I've seen a lot. I've been on YouTube 14 going on 15 years and I see certain trends. I see certain things that are happening and there's everyone that's trying to pile into these high income niches. And literally I saw six new content creators who are getting in these niches and they, 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 it's just not gonna happen for them. It's just not gonna happen. Do you know that 90% of the YouTubers out there never get to, to 10,000 subscribers? 90%. There's a reason. And one of the reasons is the setup of their YouTube channel. That's the number one reason. Because I know everyone, I don't wanna have a niche. I just wanna come on YouTube and share Whatever is at the top of my mind. And I've seen a lot of people talk about that. And I'm going to tell you from personal experience, if you go ahead and start your YouTube channel without a defined niche, there's a good chance that you're going to be in that 90% of people who don't even have 10,000 subscribers. Because that, that's one of the things. Because I've literally seen so many people say, like, well, this is what you come out, just put some videos out, and whatever videos the, the crowd reacts to the strongest, that could be your niche. 
and I'm just sitting there like, and that's still dangerous. Cause once again, 90% of YouTubers, people who have YouTube channels who consistently upload at least one YouTube channel video per week, don't have 10,000 subscribers. There's a reason, there's a reason. And we're gonna talk about that reason, the things that you should not do. And you know, it, it's, it's, going to be a, it's going to be a hot, hot summer. And there, there's so many things that we can get into, so many things we can discuss, so many things that we can build, so many things that we can create as we build out this YouTube channel situation, which is going to be crazy, which is gonna be really, really crazy once we get it built out, once we get, because I'm excited because, you know, I was thinking this weekend of the changes I have to make with my holding company set up. And th this, this is the beauty. I think of, hold on, <clears throat> man, I think of my companies as employees. So we've got the YouTube company, we got the online course company, and there, there's so many things I can do, switch and change. I mean, it, it's just, it's crazy the things you can do once you have the proper holding company strategy set up and so many things that you can set up because my, my business pays for my health insurance. That's a tax deduction. My, my health insurance comes out of a business account. Uh, my business pays for my life insurance that comes out of a business account. Those are legitimate tax deductions because those are corporate benefits. And that's something else that we're going to get into, into the YouTube and the corporate citizen playbook training. So we got a lot of stuff to go. So that's all I got to tell you guys to let you know that once you get into it, it's crazy. It is a hundred percent crazy. The things that you can do once you get your holding company situation set up. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So what I want you to do is go ahead and get in the corporate toolbox, go right ahead and get into that. Go ahead and get the money course and go ahead and get into the productivity course because the, produ the productivity course is gonna help you set up and strategize how to do everything else, which is why it's included with the holding company situation. So let's go ahead and do all that. The link's going to be in the description and the links are going to be in the comment section. My name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video.